When we think about the problems of the world, we see global warming, war, appropriation, poverty, and among numerous other problems, also the inability to make a living as an open source developer. Now, this last problem may seem a lot less consequential compared to the other ones. But what if I told you that the solution to this problem and the solution to the others are one and the same? And it's because there's a common underlying problem at the heart of all of these problems. I'm going to tell you what that problem is in one sentence. You ready for it? It is the deviation of market value from true value. Now let's think about this in the context of existing economic systems, such as capitalism and communism. And of these, I want to focus on capitalism because it is the only non-trivial economic system, really. Communism is more sort of a political means to achieve economic ends. And the other economic systems exist sort of on a spectrum between these two. So let's focus on capitalism. The capitalism has as its basis of value supply and demand. And consequently, there is a great emphasis on this idea of ownership. Now, ownership is an idea that made some kind of sense when you have uh, goods and services that are constrained in some way that are essentially finite in supply. But when you have things like works of software, art, and music, which are essentially infinite in supply, the idea of ownership and supply and demand don't make sense anymore. And yet, we employ the institution of property to constrain supply and introduce the idea of supply just so that we can induce a market value in terms of supply and demand in a capitalist economic system. And it's wrong-headed. How many of us have written copyright declarations like these on our creative works? It's a lot of work, especially when we have version control. Now, in this example, almost every line is written by a different person. So who owns the code in this case? Who owns the copyright here? Is it some of them? Is it all of them? Do they share it in some way? Doesn't really make sense especially when the reason we're employing copyright and ownership in this case is to approximate the idea of attribution, which is what we really care about here. And that brings us to the nature of the solution, which is to move away from an economic system based on ownership and supply and demand to an economic system based on attribution instead. That is moving away from who owns what to who did what and how important was it. And we can do this by the process of dialectical inheritance attribution, which just means that we do it in a collective way using common collectively agreed upon uh, standards that are applied transparently to all. Now, when we have an economic system that is based on attribution as the source of value in this way, we call it attribution-based economics. Now, once we have that, um, it gives us fairness, effective empowerment of expertise, freedom through incentives rather than through coercion, and privacy as well. Now, I could tell you all of these things, and some may still say, why should I care? There are those who would say that fairness is not a good goal and that might makes right. And that as Darwin showed us, the nature of nature is violence. Now, I know that many of us reject this ideology and we feel in our bones that it is wrong. But luckily, we don't have to resort to high philosophy and gut feeling in order to convince ourselves that, the, that an attribution-based system is truly better. Because in addition to all of those other properties we talked about, an attribution-based economic system is also efficient. And I say this from the perspective of having an admiration for the efficiency of capitalism. So understand that that is my perspective when I say that this system, an attribution-based economic system, is significantly more efficient than capitalism. And it achieves that by virtue of eliminating the waste that is inherent in adversarial competition while still preserving market forces. 
In addition to this property, there is also this other property that I think is truly profound. Um, and I want to motivate it by this example of a gyroscope. Now, many of us have had the opportunity to play with the gyroscope at some point in our lives. If you haven't, I encourage you to go out and get one and try it out. It also makes a good gift if you're thinking about giving it to somebody else uh, this year. Um, but if you've played with the gyroscope, then you've had the experience, perhaps, of putting it on your hand and moving it around. And no matter what you do, it will always maintain its axis. Even if you try to push it, and try to make it deviate from that axis, it will fight you, resist you, and it will keep to that axis no matter what. Now, if you've had this experience, then believe it or not, you have some insight into the nature of economic systems. Because if we try to get an economic system to do something other than what it wants to do, other than what is its nature, then it will resist us and it will fight that change. Now, I don't know about you, but I prefer to avoid fighting these gyroscopic forces. I'd rather have these forces work with me rather than against me. Now, in a capitalist system, there is another problem, which is that not only do you have these gyroscopic forces at work, but these forces aren't even all working together. They're working against each other in many cases. They, are, they represent misaligned interests. So that, and indeed, these misaligned interests are the very means by which these forces operate at all. So in a way, war is not just an inevitable consequence in this system, but is rather the very nature of such a system. In an attribution-based system, on the other hand, by virtue of the source of value being collective attribution, we are able to achieve alignment of all of these interests at every scale so that at every scale of society from the smallest to the largest scales the interests will be aligned will be consonant and harmonious and i think this is a very important profound quality that um, i think is the fundamental problem of economics the fundamental goal of economics to solve and i believe that an attribution based economic system addresses it and solves it so without further ado uh, i want to bring it home to the prototype that we have in mind for the emax community and we want to start in the emax community because emax has a long tradition of exploring uh, better ways of doing things and pursuing better alternatives to the status quo. Now, to give you an overview of the prototype that we've implemented for open source projects, the prototype is composed of two broad phases, that is the appraisal phase and the accounting phase. Any project is composed of ideas, capital and labor. The appraisal phase is involved in assessing the work done in terms of how much value was created and who created the value and how important that value is. The output of this stage is an attributions file. And the second phase of accounting um, is about, you know, how do you handle payments that come in and how do you pay people out? Now, the first part has more of a social component to it. And the second part is more of a technological component to it that can be automated. So in order to implement this prototype, we have two things. We have founding documents that describe the social aspects and an accounting system that automates some of the technological aspects. The founding documents in the noble tradition of the Guyanis Hagua and the U.S. Constitution uh, include a constitution which describe the guiding principles of attribution-based economics. The two main prongs are forward-looking empowerment and backward-looking fairness. This means that we want to empower those individuals and groups that are most likely to create value in the future, while also recognizing and fairly compensating those who have created value in the past to set a good example and incentivize others to take chances uh, in creating value. And it describes um, high level principles of dialectical inheritance attribution as proceeding by means of common collectively agreed upon standards that are applied to all. 
And a key thing here is these improvements feed back to the whole and apply to everyone. And this is an important quality to ensuring fairness and accuracy. There's also a declaration of non-ownership. Uh, we saw already that ownership is an overused institution. This just codifies that um, and allows us to shed the baggage of this idea of ownership where it doesn't make any sense. A third uh, document is the financial model, which describes how payments are to be treated. And a key idea here is that when you pay money to an open source project, you know, today you don't really have an incentive to do so. And it essentially is kind of like a donation. But in this model, in an attribution based model, when you pay money to a project, you're creating value in a way, you're contributing value to the project, and that itself is attributable. Um, and the manner in which we'll treat this is in terms of a fair market price that, again, we agree upon collectively. And any payment in, that is in ex that exceeds the fair market price is going to be treated as investment. And the goal here with this financial model is for the system to be self-sustaining. So uh, I think there are many open problems here and any finance experts or any other experts who are interested in contributing here, your help would be uh, is needed, certainly. There's also an attribution model document that describes some of the theoretical ideas uh, that would guide dialectical inheritance attribution. Um, and there are many interesting ideas here. Um, one that I'd like to mention is backpropagation, which is the idea that as we are improving the standards over time and they're likely to get more accurate and fair over time, we'd like these more accurate and fair standards to backpropagate and calibrate the value assignments that were done in the past. And this means that um, some people might have been underpaid in the past and we would pay them what they were underpaid or the balance. And some people may have been overpaid. Now, in that case, we're not going to go and say, hey, you know, we, we overpaid you, give us the money back. Instead, the system as a whole is going to bear the cost of being wrong. And so it's kind of an insurance policy. But I think another more interesting quality here is that I believe the system in practice wouldn't really absorb any um, negative impact here because there is an incentive for these people who have been overpaid to reinvest that money. So I think they would want to invest the money in other uh, places that the system has valued as being valuable and showing potential. Um, the second component of the implementation is the accounting system. And uh, all accounting is public, all payments into the repo are public, and all payments out of the project are also public. Uh, we can do some things for privacy. And again, the basis of the system is dialogue. It's not a fundamentally technological system. It's a fundamentally dialogue-based system. And that, to be honest with you, is everything, is all systems that we have in place. Um, but by embracing that, it means that we can do whatever we want to do by discussion. And if there's something that we cannot achieve in a technological way, we'll achieve it in a non-technological way. So, but anyway, so the point is uh, the all accounting is public um, and text files in the repository form the inputs and outputs of the accounting system, which is implemented as a GitHub action. So the uh, Typically, in a source repository, we'll have an Abe folder containing these three inputs, attributions, payments, and payouts. And we'll see how that works. Um, this is the dream.org GitHub organization account. This is an example of a repository that uses the GitHub action uh, accounting system. So there will be a payments folder, a payouts folder, as well as attributions file. The payments, um, essentially each file just represents a payment that's made to the repository. Payouts is the same, except it's payments made by the admins of the repository to contributors. An attributions file uh, breaks down the uh, attribution of the value in the repository by contributor. And then the billing system runs on every relevant commit, which is typically changes to the Abe folder. 
generates a set of transactions that are owed to various people from various payments and then creates an issue with the outstanding balances that need to be paid out to contributors and tells you what those balances are. So for repository project maintainers, uh, it automates all these accounting details and you just have to worry about fulfilling the payments. An interesting property of the prototype is that boundary incentives expand the boundary. And that is that um, the incentives in the system are so constructed that those on the periphery of the attribution-based economic system have an incentive to join in. And we'll see how that works. Um, well, as, as I mentioned, we're initially, we're starting this prototype in the Emacs community. Um, with the Simex repo, Simex is a structural editing package, and this uh, prototype will recognize direct contributors as as well as antecedents and related projects through the process of collective attribution. We all decide how financial contributions to the Simex repo are going to be distributed to the direct contributors as well as to antecedents and related projects. So the power is yours. Um, and that, that's what I meant when I said the boundary incentives expand the boundary because projects on that are that we agree are owed money from the Simex repo now would have an incentive to join because once they join, they would get that money. And we'll also be implementing this in the Racket community. Racket is a scheme dialect um, and uh, Emacs has great support for Racket in Racket mode, so I encourage you to try it. And we'll be prototyping it in the Qi repository. Qi is a language written in Racket, which is, um, you know, it's, it's it's for functional programming and things like that. And once again, we'll recognize direct contributors as well as antecedents, and we all decide and agree on how those are done. So how do you adopt this? Um, you can add the GitHub action to a repo that you are the maintainer of. You can financially support an aid project. Uh, this is important to do because the system won't get started without money as an input. And it also has network effects, as we saw. The more money that you contribute, the more incentive there is for other people to join the system. Um, and contributions are also attributable, as we said earlier. Uh, some of them can be treated as investments. Um, any help you can um, provide with funding would be attributable and very helpful, of course. Um, and yeah, if you can help us achieve the goal of self-sufficiency uh, without relying on capitalist entry points, um, that would be very helpful as well. I'd like to acknowledge the help of many individuals for um, this presentation, as well as many of the supporting things that have gone on behind the scenes for years. Uh, and in particular, for now, I also want to mention uh, I want to mention Jair and Ariana, who helped with, uh, who wrote the uh, the accounting system that we saw earlier, and Salim, who encouraged me to take this social approach to um, the prototype, and so many more people who have believed and invested in the cause of attribution, not ownership. I want to leave you with this closing thought. The electromagnetic attraction between two objects is 10 to the 42nd power stronger than the gravitational attraction between these same objects. And yet, a stone falls to the earth under the influence of gravity, not magnetism. The reason is that the electromagnetic forces are polarized, much like our world, and cancel each other out. Now, in this world, we are told that we should look out for ourselves because no one is going to look out for us. That we should take care of our own because we can't rely on others to care. An attribution-based economy is nothing like that. We care about each other. We take care of each other because taking care of one another is valuable. And an attribution-based economic system is capable of recognizing that value in financial terms. And as a result, we are safe in the embrace of the world. So, um, yeah, let's go.